Hello and good afternoon. Welcome to the PM Model Show, your weekly roundup of the good, the bad and the ugly and everything in between that's happening in the model world. As always, joined by Mr. Matt from live from the PM HQ yes, with his with, audience. With an audience of one. Say hello, audience. Hello. <laughs> I think. Yeah, we've got to be good now. We've got the accountant with us. It's so yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. it. No bargains allowed. <laughs> anyway, good afternoon. It's lovely to have you all with us. Obviously, it's a bit of a funny week this week. If you haven't realised already, obviously it would have been our Telford weekend this weekend. Uh, and at this point, we would have had boxes everywhere and actually running around like headless chickens. But we're yes. not, isn't it? Great. No, isn't it? Relaxed. We could get used to this, couldn't we? This is it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, too used to it. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> Uh, so yes, yeah, so uh, we're obviously going to speak about it a bit later, but we're going to plan to bring you plenty of uh, deals and bargains and obviously with some demos, fun and laughter and all the rest of it from literally Friday night until uh, Sunday tea time really, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, so that's the plan. So we'll talk about that in a minute. Anyway, what's been happening, Matt, over at PM Stores this week? We've been restocking basically is, is the plan for the weekend. So we've got stuff in to sell, obviously. Yes. Um, paint's going to be restocked. And as usual stuff and obviously as you can see behind me we've had a few new deliveries obviously we've had a hercules to review i have and indeed and the peacemaker so Absolutely. Uh, yeah it's it's just been building up obviously for what's going to be happening this weekend this end of it and obviously the auction stuff as well has been posted uh, i've got a few left to do which are going abroad to be booked in uh, but yeah pretty much that's my week and we're on Wednesday already, aren't we? It's just crazy. I know, yeah, crazy, absolutely crazy. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so this week, as we were saying about one of the big things that came in and obviously the pre-orders went out, uh, if you pre-ordered it from us already, is the Zvezda C130H Hercules. Obviously the review of that I did, it went up uh, yesterday. Uh, very nice indeed. Again, it's nice to have a bang up to date Herc recess details it's got beautiful interior to it as well yeah. uh, and i can imagine as we were saying that give it a few months the aftermarket guys will be on this literally like a uh, proverbial flowers or flies even round a pot uh, <laughs> and uh, it literally because obviously engines uh, and flaps and stuff and to be honest with you some of the shortcomings that i found with the kit because i was saying it hasn't got uh, positionable like flaps or ailerons or you know those types of things you can imagine the aftermarket people will come down those and probably do a better resin versions if it makes sense and stuff but there is ones available for the italery kit which i suppose would be the next or was the best one until this one came along so consequently it's really nice to have a brand new tool up to date with all the bits and pieces going through with it so yes yes yeah so i, I think like you've said when the aftermarket guys go on obviously there'll be a mass set coming out for it probably a big headset yeah. uh, uh you know and decals will be in abundance there's mm. so many nice schemes for uh, for the H version. Yes. It's uh, it's going to look nice. I think it's going to be uh, nice mm. to see when we can finally go back to a model show, some of them on the table. Yeah, yeah, no, it is. Again, it's one of those ones where it's the, it's the normal hook. It's not like the stretch one or anything yeah. else. It's still a nice size. It's yeah. not massively stupidly over the top like some of the 70 second stuff I've got up there. Even though it's a Hercules, it's not massive, massive. I can't remember what the size is. It had them on these, didn't it? What is it? Because I did say in the thing, 41 centimeters. Yeah. So it's a nice size. I don't think it's going to be totally over the top, but it's one of those kits where it lends itself really, really nicely to a lot of scratch building, aftermarket. And again, I can imagine everything from firefighting versions coming out there to Coast Guard versions and yeah. all the really brightly colored ones, as well as obviously, you know, great camo schemes from around the world as well. And because it's the H, it's quite long lived. It's been in service since 80s hey, was, till now. Was Fat Albert a H? Yeah, yeah. So there you go. That's yeah. it. So yes, uh, as I say, my uncle used to be at Albert Square, as they used to call it, and that was the Herc base down at uh, in the uh -huh. Falklands. Okay. After the war, they used to have the area where they used to park the ramp for the Herc stand there, right. and it was known as Albert Square from EastEnders because yeah. it's got fat Alberts were full of it, you see. Yeah, yeah. So, so yes, so it's that one. So that one's very, very nice. The other one which is going to be up with you today is the Peacemaker. Uh, so this is the B36, and again, it's really nice to see them in 144 scale. And again, it's Roden, so unfortunately you've always got that little thing with flash the parts are incredibly crisp the recess panel lining is on par it's beautifully detailed right the way through but the clear parts are a nightmare it does look a bit sticky uh which is a bit unfortunate but again you need a mask set this is yeah yeah 
even I wouldn't even attempt to do that. That is one of those ones which needs a mask set for it because they'd be tiny little die cut masks that you could put in and then paint it and you'd have no problem. But without it, oh, it would be horrendous. Uh, yeah. I hate to think how many bits of individual windows and glass are on that thing right the way through. So there's a lot of glazes on them, isn't there? It's a proper greenhouse. So, um, yeah, mask set must be a must. Yes. It's a nice scale as well, isn't it, really, compared to the 72nd one. It's it's mm. manageable and like you were saying we were talking before the show you're not going to see a lot in the cockpit in that anyway no. are you so it's not no. you know imperative that it's absolutely crystal clear the clay pot so i think you'd get away with it it'll just look impressive once it's mm. built so yeah the most impressive thing to be honest the panel line detail considering the scale of 144 yeah. it's very very fine and very sharp yeah. um you know and you look around and you see some of the flash onto it but to be honest once you've cleaned that up the parts themselves are very very nicely done it's yeah. just unfortunately some of the little areas are closed over with flash and various things so you just need to get in there either with like a deburring tool or a scraper or yeah. just a sanding stick and you'll be absolutely fine because the actual panel lining onto it is finer than what's on that you know yeah. that's how they've done it that's the thing we're roading they're so nearly there i suppose yeah they're really again they do nice subjects it's just some of the execution it's great in some places and it's a bit lacking in other clear parts is one of the weaker yeah uh, areas. areas i think hmm. like i say the panel lining and stuff what even on the, some of their older kits is, is really good hmm. and like you said there's a bit of flash burning and stuff but that's that's easy clean up stuff but yeah it's always a bit thing with their clear parts but you know it's it is it is what it is and the, i don't think i can't think of anybody else who does a peacemaker in that scale not uh, no not me not 144 no so uh, and then obviously another news talking 1144 is the great war hobbies b52 that's going to be coming out mm. this year at some point which we will be having up on our pre-order so if anybody's yes. interested um again obviously you've got the 72nd model collect one mm -hmm. and look for people who haven't got your space or a wall <laughs> space to hang it yeah <laughs> yeah and it's, it's a nice scale shall we say Mm. to be honest i saw i uh, by the power of editing i'll put the photos below yeah. um and i did see it the other day and i had a good look around the cad work and the, the yeah. photos of it and again it looks really nice and it is one of those things where to be honest with you it's almost that sort of in between scale because you when you talk 144 you're sort of this size mm. but the trouble is with bombers because to be honest i've got my bomber fleet up here on the wall when you go up to 72nd you're suddenly here there's nothing in between no. um but the great thing is and like we spoke about in this one is that the level of detail though now mm. is fantastic in these smaller kits and that's the nice thing so to get a b52 in 144 yeah. will be absolutely gorgeously detailed where if you go back to some of the old ones that have been out there over the years they just look like carvings well even, even the old sense second one looks a bit clunky and horrible doesn't it yeah it's a, probably the one you've built yeah again it's um all in manufacturing and obviously design cab design to the help so that's it our things have changed and moved along yeah exactly so yeah it'd be nice to see what great wallabies do with that because mm. by there obviously victor vulcan and and some of the other stuff that they've done in that scale the tsr2 is perfectly quite you know they're all nice kits so yes yeah we'll see indeed indeed uh the other thing as well you've got there which i just have to point out is this fantastic porsche well, this is the one, because obviously they've been drip feeding the older, you know, they've done the Jägermeister one and I think the, the Valiant Porsche in the big. But, yeah. So this is the one, the Martini one, that was the sought after one. So they finally re-released -re -re it. Um, totally detailed, you can see, you get the photo etch with it inside and cartograph decals and, you know, so you're not going to yes. hassle with obviously Tamiya thick decals. Mm -hmm. And it's a cracking scheme, isn't it? Let's be honest. It is, yeah. No, there's, there's something about the uh, the sort of, you know, the Porsche with the martini scheme and, oh. you know, it's very 80s, yes. you know. Yeah, <laughs> it is actually. It's 1976 world champion. Isn't it? Oh, there you go, 76, even in the 70s. Crikey. So, very nice. Yeah, so we've got them in stock. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, there's the new tool Marder one, which is based on a French tractor. Yeah, yes. That the Germans captured loads of when they were invaded so they converted them yeah so again a couple of really nice figures in that actually tammy have so come on in their figures but, yeah you know back in the day to now they've found, they really are nice mm -hmm. so um and obviously all my hobbies again another absolute stunning kit and also their box art's getting tasty now as well isn't it yeah, that's good isn't it 
That's quite something that is. Yeah. So uh, obviously that's the Mark II uh, C version, so the yeah. navalised version, isn't it, with the well, say the bomb racks and all the rest. So there you go, we'll show you the back so yeah. for that. I like Some that. nice markings in that, yeah. There you go, that one, isn't it? I yeah. Down, that one's cool. And yeah. oh, actually that one, look, look at that. Mm. Yes. So Very nice. The bomber version or, yeah, so this is the expert one, so you get your little bit of etching, your mass set, but some nice schemes on that. Cool. And beautiful, also, beautiful kit. Yeah, and also in Armour Hobbies, it's not up there, it's just in the normal, because we've had an Armour Hobbies restock. So the Yaks are back in stock, the Wildcats um, and the Hurricanes, or most of the Hurricanes are back in. Yeah. Um, but we've got a new box in the Wildcat, which is the um, the Navy one, just the normal one at the bottom. Yeah, oh, that one there. Yeah, so it's not the expert one. And we should be getting the rest back in stock pretty soon as well, actually. But yeah. So if you didn't want all the mass set and the etch, then you can just get the normal, you know, standard boxing of it. Very nice. So. You've, you've reviewed that and it's cracking little kit, isn't it? Absolutely stunning. Yeah, having built now the Hurricane, which is yeah. my little over one over there, beautiful kit, fell together. The detail on it is amazing. But that Wildcat, as I say, when I did the review of it, I can't believe you get all the photo etch for the gearing, for the gear. And it's like, but it's it's seventy second. You shouldn't get that much detail in seventy second. It is absolutely fantastic. Blown away by the detail and the surface detail on the yaks as well. It's yeah. like, you know, every last rivet and bolt and you name it and divot and anything yeah. it's got on it, it is represented and recreated onto it, and it is beautifully done. Very very nice done indeed. I was say looking forward to what they release next. Really, we, um, got well, we are. There is the room obviously with a forty eight scale. Well, if it comes true, they are, they are on about doing a 48 hurricane, so hopefully they will come good with that. Mm. Um, I think they'd be a bit daft if they didn't. No. Well, the thing is, even if they just took their 70 second and upscaled it, it'll still be better detail than, say, the FX one. Yeah. Because, and that's just if they upscaled it and didn't do anything to it. So let's assume they do a few little nice things to it and tweak it a bit and, you know, and add the detail. It yeah. should be off the chart. So, yeah. 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 And again, that's the trouble though, the shot themselves in the foot. Because I'm not being funny, if they can make it that big and it's amazing, what they're going to do there? So if it falls flat, I'm going to, yeah, I'll be very disappointed. Well, again, I think it's going to be... set the bar high. Yeah, it's going to be price point again, isn't it? I think, you know, yeah. I think that's sort of what brings on about the Zarevsta Hind. I mean, it's, it's the same price as the Hercules, but obviously it's a different scale. Yeah. You say, oh, well, it's lacking this, that, and the other, but it was for sort of 50 quid. Yes. We really, if they'd have put another 20 quid on it, mm -hmm. did the detail, people would have still bought it. I don't think they would have quibbled. No. I think that may be the trouble we've spoken about before about this at length, but the Herc is the same thing. They could have gone a little bit further with the detail, and I think people would pay it. I think companies worry about having a price point, and like they, they manufacture to a price point, because obviously their market research and that says they will sell it at that price, yeah. but clearly they can't go any more. I think they really ought to give the modeler a bit more of a, uh, a chance at it because everything I've seen, uh, like the Hind especially, is that it's so close to being the ultimate model, but they just at the last minute swerved off. Uh, so like the hind was the lacking of the detail in the cockpit and some of the deed surface detail where you think I would have happily paid another 20 quid or 25 quid more to have everything there so I haven't got to mess around with it. The thing is though, once you start getting over that 50 quid margin I think, then mm. you know they obviously must be aware of it. Oh yeah, yeah it's I'm sure like, they're... And they're limiting the mm. sales rather than keeping it to the 50, you know, 49.99 region. Mm. Uh, and then they'll sell more because obviously they've got to be aware as well that the aftermarket people like we're saying with the hook are going to go be all over it oh so yeah all with the find obviously you can get that the um, cockpit set yeah uh, and there'll be Eddard's done an absolute ton of aftermarket yeah. for it now haven't they and they're gonna they're gonna do it with uh, Hercules as well so is it worth them investing all that time when they know other companies are going to do it for them it is, yeah, absolutely. There is that. It's just that also the thing is uh, the unknown being Zvezda. I don't know what their home market sale is like. Do they, are they, you know, obviously we have it with a lot of the Japanese companies, isn't it? Yeah. They build and manufacture for their home market. We're almost seen as the, well, you can have whatever's left. 
you know, because that's where their bread and butter is. They know their market well uh, and they've got it nailed. You know, so the thing is, is that when you get company like Tesla, I just wonder sometimes is that from a Russian point of view, well, uh, Russia is it's mass, that's it. Fast. And so think are they the thinking traffic? they're doing it to that price point because the people of, you know, with the Russian Federation, that's yeah. their ultimate price point and that's what it is. Forget yeah. what we are in the West and all the rest of it, but it may be that they are pricing to their home thing and obviously going to that area, yeah. you know. So yeah. you just never know, do you? As far as I know, that's their first sort of modern Western aeroplane that they've really yes. tackled. Yeah. As far as I can think of, I know obviously... They've done a few World War Two stuff, but they they normally stick to like you say. They've done a few 109s in the past, and, and mm -hmm. mainly like Sukhois and Migs and yes. Yaks and the, you know the usual mm -hmm. stuff. So yeah. oh, perhaps they're branching out a little bit. And the thing is, is when I pointed out in the review, there's some bits in there which are for the more spec op versions and stuff like that. So you've got the big blisters that go on the back, which can have the trackers and the various yeah. things onto them. So there's other things of this coming down the line as well. They're going to so, do a specter, aren't they? Yeah, that's it. They've got to so, do a chip one, because obviously that's the other thing as well. It's a few lumps and bumps up here, but obviously these are all interchangeable Lots with different sponsors. versions. So you know full well that there's other versions of those coming out because of various requirements that the aircraft have. And there's some bits and pieces up in the wings and that as well. So there's other versions definitely coming down the line. They're going to do a J, aren't they? they yes. Might. Yeah, you'd it, think they're going with a J. To do a J. So, but yes. I think the H1s comes with the better mm. schemes. But again, I think, again, it was the golden era being from the sort of, you know, 70s and 80s and 90s and things like that. They had lots of colourful tail art. The markings were more flamboyant before they left, literally just turned in grey. I just think you do an Israeli one. Yeah, that's it. It'd be nice in Israeli. I've, yeah, the RAF one, even if you went that, you've got multiple options. Because obviously you're green and grey on top, but some of them had the black bottom. Some yeah. of them had the grey bottom. Some yeah. of them were full wrap around. So. Can you go back to doing the brown and like the Middle East one with that? I think so, yeah, out of the H was version that was there. I think it w would have been, yeah, would have been early H's down then. Because that, that's always been a nice scheme, mm. so, yeah, interesting. Interesting, it is. They're very, very interesting aircraft. Again, it's one of those ones where it's such a widely used aircraft with all different countries around the world, yeah. and it's so long-lived, in theory, as you say, a good kit of one of these should do really well, because again, pick your markings, pick your colouring, whatever you're into, I can guarantee there's probably a Herc in, in that area, in that theatre. Yeah. So yeah, absolutely. And then last up, obviously, you've done the MiG-19. Yes. The trumpeter kit reboxed with all the uh, Edward goodness. And I have to say, it's one of those ones, it's that, although we often talk about early Trumpeter has issues, uh, shall we say, perhaps like heavy duty riveting, plastic, uh, burring marks, things like that, which was early Trumpeter, which to be honest, they pretty much got on top of within a couple of years. Yeah. This is 2002, yeah. so you would think it's almost 20 years old now. Uh, really nice the plastic is that hard what i call hasagawa chinky type plastic the surface detail is extremely sharp and crisp there's no real flash onto it there's hardly any sink marks into it mm. uh it's got great detail right the way through so from that point of view it's very very nice and as i say you can do the different versions into it as well so you've got two fuselages in there two tails all the different ones in these ones to be able to do whichever one you want so again you know, uh, it's one of those ones where I think it's a, the 19 is quite overlooked, being the twin engined version. Yeah, I like the 19. I always prefer yeah. that, the 17 or yeah. the one I do like the Mic 19, but it's like a stopgap aircraft, really, wasn't it? Anyway, so. it, it is like the hybrid between a 17 and a 21, isn't it? It's the way it was. So, yes, uh, but yeah. no, very, very nice. Good got, kit. And again, you know, it's one of those things. It's funny how they've put in aftermarket wheels and gun barrels because mm. the kit ones actually aren't bad at all. Right. The kit gun barrels are probably as good as the resin ones, you know, so, you know, there's not a lot in into it, but you do get fantastic colour photo etch for obviously both versions as well, yeah. uh, and all the goodies into it. The markings are gorgeous right the way through, so, yeah, and obviously if you are into your sort of natural metal finish, you'll love it. It's one yeah. of those aircraft, isn't it? You don't see yeah. them. Well, there is one version in there, I think it was the Egyptian one, which is in yes. the grace. It looks wrong. Yeah, yeah, it does. You need it in the metals with a natural metal finish. And again, it's got good surface detail on that kit as well. It'll take washes well and, and stuff like that. You're going to end up with something very, very nice. So, good kit. Yeah, another one probably to grab while you can because it would 
fetching silly money when you can't get them. Yeah, but it's it one of them kits. I'm looking at it thinking, oh, it's only 19, I'm not that mm. bothered. But you know when that's come and gone? Yeah. It'll be one of them that when you find them, they'll be worth silly money. Oh, it, makes, yeah, absolutely. I don't know, it's probably not that popular, but yeah. Mm. No. Who knows? Who knows? Definitely interesting stuff. But no, this week's ones, I must admit, they're all very, very interesting. It, uh, yeah. it was nice to see the Herc eventually. The yeah. Peacemaker in that scale, because otherwise it's... Who made the big 72nd one? Was that a tallery? No, Ravel. I've got it up. Is it up Ravel? Up. Yeah. I've actually got one upstairs. It is going in an auction when I can get around to shifting some of my own stuff. Yeah. Because uh, I'll never build it. It's too big for me, and it's, it's obviously got wings now, so it's not my um, <laughs> of interest anymore. Yeah. But, um, yeah, it's the old monogram Ravel one. And that is huge. It is. That is, that is a massive. big gangly lump, that thing. I built it when I was about about 15, I think I was. Yeah. Uh, and I remember it being a dust magnet on my wardrobe. Yeah. It's, it's just and knocking it all the time. See them at shows <laughs> and you think, ah, oh, you actually managed to transport that. Because yeah. it's not one where you can take the wings off, I don't think. No. It's that old. Mm -hmm. It has going to have to be put together. Well, yeah. so I think if somebody did retool it now in 70 second, it would make it so you could unclip the wings and it's yeah, unplug it. You know, more manageable, shall we say? But yeah, um, no. Yes, it's a very big lump. It is extremely big lump. So as I say, it's nice to see the bomber fleet getting a bit of love now in a sensible scale. And as I say the details looking fantastic. And as I say, looking forward definitely to get my hands on that one four four B fifty two. Yeah. yeah. So it'd be interesting to see the detail on it against my other one. So yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's it really for news for stuff coming in. Mm -hmm. um, just we've got a delivery coming, which is obviously the Edar One Tens, which we've had on pre-order, which is the Battle of Britain ones. Yeah, that's, our fingers crossed. It's leaving Germany today, so it should mm -hmm. be by Friday. All being well, but obviously now with lockdown coming in the UK, there has been a bit of a delay. As Phil will tell you with the 130 because I literally that got picked up on Thursday last week and they didn't get it till yesterday and I've had yeah. a few other um, people message me to say you know has it been sent and stuff which it had it's just and then it, it turned up yesterday so and that's with Parcel Force 48 so obviously things are going to be ramping up again for postal services couriers so again it's probably going to take a little bit longer than it has been for the next I was going to say, you know, lockdown. just so, just to recap patient. with people, obviously the UK as of tonight goes into a four week lockdown technically till sort of December the second, I think Seven it is. Disabled. Yeah. So um, obviously non essential services are all being closed, but that doesn't affect us because obviously we're an online store. We don't have people coming in. No, and we're very essential. Uh, we are very essential service definitely because we have to keep you lot going with stuff yeah so uh Probably. we'll still be here doing all, all of this yeah. uh and obviously from a shipping point of view we will ship on time on day and everything else but as was pointed out to me I've got a good friend of mine he actually drives a parcel force who bought me this so i can give him grief and i was like where's my freaking kit and he was like honestly i've done two van falls today normally as one big yeah. van he drives a seven and a half tonner and he was like this is my second load today and he said it's only going to get worse because of christmas yeah, so again i think you know with delivery times and that just can, can be a little bit patient we send them out and they're usually by curry on 48 hours and obviously with my type of stuff it's usually all first class sign for and everything else like you know those ways but we have got christmas coming we have got a lockdown so the postal system does take a hell of a hit throughout it's, everything it's going to be under strain so yeah i mean everything that we post goes second class um Royal Mail, so you will get your tracking number, it'll be scanned and you'll get an email like you normally do. Obviously, if it's bigger stuff like the Herc's a bit bigger, it'll go through the courier. Mm -hmm. um, everything's booked for interparcel, so it is all tracked and everything else. So uh, just request a tracking number if you really want one, to be honest. Yeah. Obviously, we do get, obviously, a lot of things to go posting out. So don't always get a chance to email everybody a tracking number, but, you know, we'll be doing, I mean, we have kind of discussed what we're going to do through lockdown, haven't we? Yes, yeah. We are going to try and do shows in an afternoon as much as we can. We can't guarantee it's going to be every day. Yeah. Um, because obviously Phil's got to work and survive, but we are going to try and do a couple of hours on a on an afternoon at some point for, for your entertainment and our sanity. 
Yeah, it's, absolutely, it's, that's how it works. Yeah. yeah, we would say we're doing it for you guys, but actually we're doing it for us as well. Yeah. <laughs> but no, that is the plan. Obviously, next week uh, we probably won't be doing it on the Monday because obviously we've got the fallout from this weekend coming, um, which we'll talk about in a second. Uh, and but then obviously onwards uh, Tuesday. I normally do a Tuesday show anyway, so we'll have that with Matt and Wednesday. me and Matt do a live afternoon one. We'll do one on Wednesday as we do this one, but we'll make yeah. it live instead of recorded like today. Thursday, obviously, we normally do the evening live shows where we can divert those around or if what and why just perhaps do it evening instead of the afternoon and on yeah. friday we can do a catch up with you as well so that's the plan we'll keep you all entertained and obviously we can keep you up to date then exactly it has things are coming in stock going out and various things as well like that from the sales side of it because again we have got some plans for uh later on and various things we want to do with the company and stuff so we can keep you guys all in the loop to yeah. see what new things we're getting in and what's going out and things like that cross, this will be the last episode on a wednesday i'll be in this office because i'm it will i think i'll be back in my own office because the electricians are going to come so yes if you haven't known yes. it's had a full makeover yes. it's had a coat of plaster multiple yeah. coats of paint Painted, yeah unless it's proper pleased that i'm moving out for some reason I've yes got... i can't think why i can't either I've as, been as if she through. doesn't want to stare at your face all day long <laughs> <laughs> i've been a moral lodger for the past few weeks <laughs> and I've actually liked it because I've had sunlight as well. That's it. Yeah, you know, you're back to having to have a picture on the wall of a field. Yes, yeah. You'd be like the Windows startup <laughs> screen, just yeah. a rolling field with blue sky. Yeah. We'll paint yeah, one of those so. on the wall. <laughs> well, yeah, so, so yeah. Um, put electricians, put, put lightings in and finish off some of the electric, and that will be back up and running my office. So, yep. yeah, nice. The studio come office. It is, yeah. absolutely. And we have proper lighting and all the bits and pieces in there. So, yeah, looking good. Should yeah. be absolutely fantastic. Uh, so just before we move on to questions, we'll just cover what's going to happen then. Yeah. Um, on Friday night at 7.30, we'll be with you uh, for an evening of just having a giggle. Uh, to be honest, we're going to be discussing the group builds and the SIGs, uh, the layout and the timings and everything for them for next year and just having a little bit of fun. So if you'd love to join us with that one, it'll be our first of our what would have been Road to Telford series. But obviously, because mm. there is no Road to Telford, we're just calling it the Telford weekend, which is obviously would normally be for the IPMA nationals um, in Telford in the UK so you probably will know about it obviously this year it's not going to happen so we're going to do our own version of it um, what I'm planning on doing if I get a bit of time is I'm going to do some videos get some photos together and some montages and that from previous last 10 years because this would have been our 10 year anniversary of doing the show as a company so we thought it'd be interesting to do that so I'm going to try and dig some of those out over the next few days and we'll show that perhaps on the Saturday night and on the over the weekend as well we've got that one yeah. then we're going to be back with you on the Saturday morning for the first show uh, from it and then obviously we're going to be doing demos and uh, talking to you answering questions we'll be all over social media so we'll be on YouTube we'll be on obviously on Facebook and we'll be on the usual suspects on the Flory Models site and obviously in the Flory Models forum things like that so we'll be answering your questions as we're going along and talking about general stuff yeah. we'll also be doing uh, is having a sale with the PM store so uh, PM store will be doing obviously discounts on pretty much everything that we do in there from kit side of things yeah. uh, obviously they'll vary we're going to be having flash sales so we might just have five kits at a certain price we might have 10 kits at a certain price yep. we might have one yep. and then obviously it'll be on a first come first uh, basis uh, and we'll be doing those as well so keep up to date with everything that's going on with that and as I said we'll have normal sort of discount codes and that for the entire weekend flooring models will have discounts as well we'll be slightly separate but you can then order direct from there or you can get them out of Matt as well at the same time if you want to do multiples uh, and do it that way so that's the plan for it so that will then flow into Saturday afternoon and then it'll flow into Saturday evening as well and then we're going to do Sunday morning and then Sunday afternoon finishing at five o'clock with a giant wind up at the end yep. a wrap-up show which would be the final one uh, it'll be fun in it so it will it'll be uh, very very oh, good be a good giggle it'll be good and then on the Monday, clearly, we'll be then sending out all your orders. So Matt will be down the unit the first thing in the morning. I'll be out in the other unit and we'll be sending out, pulling our air out, up to your neck in packaging and invoices and all the rest of it. Uh, and making the couriers and the postal service bow under the weight. Yeah. So yeah. that's how that that's one what, will actually hey, that's work. that's what we're hoping. Well, that's what <laughs> we're hoping. That would be the nice side of doing it all. Yeah. So uh, it'd, be, it'd be interesting because normally, you say, you do the show and then you've got the chaos of when we come back on the Monday of unloading everything and putting it all back in 
in stock, but this time be a case of coming in and then having to do everything afterwards. Yeah, reams of paper everywhere. Yes, that's it. It will be. Yeah, better stock up on toner cartridges and paper. Yeah, we'll be fine. It'll be good. It'll be, um, be a good laugh, actually. Looking forward to it. Yes, it should be. It should be a good old laugh. We're looking forward to that one. Yeah. Anyway, uh, should we f finish off with the questions for today? Yes, we'll do the questions. So, first question is up from Graham. He says, uh, I just watching uh, some of your older reviews. Oh, God. Uh, and really enjoy the one on the Mark II Argosy. You yep. knew this was going to come back and bite you at somewhere. Uh, no, we'll avoid this one. Just skip that bit. And okay, <laughs> Matt, when are you building the Argosy? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It's not my genre no more doing aircraft, is it? I've proper switched over to the dark side and figures. So, never say never. I've not knocked it completely on the, on the head. It'll I'm, probably I'm, come along just after he's done the bison, which might be a while as well. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, waiting for the video build. You might have to wait a while on that one. Uh, Phil, have you ever reviewed the Meng Husky, uh, the tactical support vehicle? I haven't. Or no. not that we can remember. No, you haven't. You definitely haven't. So we will get you on to review because he's so, a really, really nice kit. It was well with the Warrior and... Yeah, with the other know, type of things. And other stuff, modern um, hmm. stuff that's yes. out. So yeah, we'll get you on to review. Cool. Uh, last question. Who makes the best L39 in 148 scale, trumpeter or special hobby? Right. Well, <laughs> this one's... Obviously, the special hobby one was the rebox for what Eddard's done. Mm -hmm. which you reviewed and you yeah, know, it's a nice kit, but it's an older kit. I'd yes. say the Trumpy one would be the easier to build. Mm -hmm. Out of the two, yeah, don't probably think there's a lot in it. I think you could probably, you know, flip a coin, take a pick. I was going to say, really, uh, also if you're depending on your markings, because like I reviewed the what was the actual kit called? It's called the Evolution or Evolution? The Evolution, I think. Was it yeah, the Evolution. So got... obviously, you do get yeah. some very tasty markings in that. Yes, you do. You do. And actually, the actual standard special lobby boxing is not got bad decal schemes in it either. Hmm. Where I know ew, it's the Brightling one is one right. of the boxings for the Trumpy one. Mm hmm. And another one, which is like an aero uh, um, batik display team. Yeah. And then they do another version of it, which is a camoed one. I'm not quite hundred percent what schemes are in it, but obviously if you scale mate it, they'll tell you. You know, you'll see it. But I would probably say the the trumpy one's easier to build. Would be the more straightforward build. Yeah. But I think with the other one, because you get resin with the special lobby one. That's yes. it. You get some resin bits. Yeah. So, yes, it's where you want to go. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, I did, to be honest, I don't think there's much between them, is it? I think we agree. No, there's not not same. a lot in it. It's it's easier build compared to detail, I think. Yeah. So I would look at really as well is obviously for the marking options. You know, which one takes your eye that way as well, and obviously yeah. with price as well. So, but as I say I think trumpeters will probably go too easy together, more straightforward. Yeah, I mean, um, yeah. you got maybe a little bit more detail on the special hobby one, but I don't think there's honestly that much in it. Yeah. Definitely, I don't think any of them's a bad kit, is it? No, I don't think so. No, definitely. No. I don't think there's a definitive answer to that, is there? No, no, no. I don't think there's a, you can actually just stamp on one. Yeah. Uh, Stephen says, "Hi, Matt. I seem to be downed twice for a Ryefield mo uh, models Challenger Two main battle tank pre-order. Can you put me down for just one?" Yes, I'll get Andy to adjust it. I'm sorry, there's no going back once you've put yeah. your name in. <laughs> no, we can sort that. Winnebago John, <laughs> he keeps yeah. saying, can you change me name? No, yeah. it's brilliant. You've got the best, I don't know why you want to change it, John. It's the best one on the site. Winnebago John. <laughs> uh, hi, Matt. Will you be stocking the new Kinetic 148 scale Harrier GR3? Well, I don't know. If so, please reserve me one. Yeah, of course we will. Yeah, it's going to we be will. Item. As soon as we, we still ain't got any info. We've still got no idea how much it's going to be or whatever. That's why there's no pre-order up, so... Again, I know, yeah, we can just briefly touch on this. Mm. I'm get well, I've had a few people mention to me about obviously manufacturers and they're not releasing things. I know a lot of people are speaking about Airfix on yeah. even on our forum. I've had other people to say to me about um, the SH60 Black Hawks and stuff that I did and the Seahawks and Ocean Hawks. Uh, Kinetic is another one. Um, again, it, 
it seems to be there's a little change in some of the um, the way that some of the companies are doing their work. And I think that is because of how the world is. The biggest problem with the world at the moment is shipping. Um, ocean going containers, you know, those are ones that wash up in West Country beaches all the time. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> but the thing is, they're all in the wrong place still. Uh, so the trouble that you've got, there's lots of companies who have got produce and they're trying to get it out of their country, namely China, um, but there's no actual containers there. So you, instead of it being a nice, you know, like trucks on a train track of these containers going round, they're all in the wrong place. Uh, and there is a delay getting them in. And we've had it happen to one of ours as well, where it got yep. taken off a ship and it's in the wrong port. Yep. So we're waiting on it to get into the UK, but we don't know when that's going to be because it's, you know, it, you are literally like Lego bricks. You're one Lego brick in a very big pile. So when it does come in and comes through and then obviously clears customs and eventually gets through and debonded and all the rest of it is then obviously when we get it. But we don't know when that will be. And sometimes it's almost touchable, but you can't because you're not allowed. So, and that's always going to be a problem. So also we think, you know, with other manufacturers, such as, to be honest, it seems to be Kinetic especially are doing it now and with Kitty Hawk, they're selling direct. Mm. And it's unfortunately, and it's a very, very annoying to us, but it's circumventing us as stockists and sellers because people are getting them now and then people are coming to us saying, where are they? Yeah. But we physically can't get hold of them. It's not that we don't want to stop them and it's not that we haven't paid for them or in some cases and things like that. It's just that we physically haven't got them here in the UK. So it is annoying that people can go off and they obviously buy them direct from certain stores, from different manufacturers and things like that and can have them sent to them in a week. But we can't get our stocks to us. And it is I very, very really frustrating. I don't think about what Kitty offers. I don't think that's right. No, I don't either. I, don't I think, think it's the bad. manufacturers should be. I know it sounds daft, but be able to sell them because they're just undermining their own customers or, or the retail trade. Yes. Yeah, I totally I, agree. Absolutely. You know, I, obviously they can do it, but hmm. I say I, I don't think they should. No, I, I don't think they should either. But then that's because we are from this side of the fence and not the end users. Yeah. So it's very frustrating to an end user. And I can understand why people think, oh, stuff it, I'll cancel pre-orders like with us or with other yeah. companies, wherever, and just go and get it direct because they can get it within two weeks. Yeah. And all right, they might get hit on import duties and stuff like that. And But some people don't care. They just want the kit in their hand. Yeah, exactly. And it's like, yeah. well, that's what you want to be. So when we get them, obviously, they will be on sale and everything. It's just we're just waiting for them to come in. Yeah, so, but going back to what Phil was saying about containers and stuff, you've also got to think as well. The ports, a lot of the ports are running understaffed. Yes. Again, so that's hitting, and I know obviously one of our suppliers has been hit pretty badly with containers being delayed or going to be delayed, which is going to affect our pre-orders. So I'll pre-warn you on this, and the main one that's going to be hit for a pre-order is Great Wall Hobbies. Yeah. Um, or our stocks of Great Wall Hobbies is going to be hit. Um, it's going to be really delayed, I think. So, and there's nothing, you know, we could do about it, or obviously the import could do about it. It's just a container stuck somewhere that they can't move. Yes. And that's what it will be. So, mm -hmm. yeah, there's definitely, as if we get more information of when there is going to be dates, we'll obviously let you know. But until then, we're as much in the dark, and, and really, obviously, for, mm -hmm. uh, for the importer, it must be proper stressful oh it's got to be incredibly money, stressful for them yeah. stuck in a container yeah. on the other yeah. side or wherever it is stuck in the world mm -hmm. you know? all i will say though for these you know people who do want to circumvent you do have to think that if everybody just goes direct to the manufacturer if there is no people like us who import and then sell and resell and stuff like that is that if we go they can charge what they like yeah, that's it so you know you might be getting a bargain now but my only work because i know it's happened with other things mm. is that suddenly they're the only one and they're selling direct they can actually charge what they like there because yeah. no one's there to keep them in check just saying when we've all gone you yeah. know that's yeah, anyway yeah. last point i will point out is that because it's come to my attention and i'm not speaking for airfix but i can speak for another company who works similar their problem is is that because of covid at the beginning of the year they didn't get production slots um, so obviously they book a molding machine and all the stuff that goes with it in infrastructure and have a production run done of a product uh, or a line, okay? But they've only got that line for X amount of time. So what's happened is it's been pushed back. So where they might have had two or three production runs due, they've had to make a decision on what to drop. 
And I know people are talking about the sea vixens being dropped. Mm -hmm. And I think it's probably what's happened as well is that they've turned around and said, well, look, now we are six months behind where we were. I think what we're going to have to do is lose perhaps doing one of those so we can still bring out two of these because they can't bring out all three because if I've only got two slots, three into two doesn't go. So that's what they're having to do. But I know another company is doing the same thing that they've had to stop doing some items, some lines of product because they need other lines and they've only got X amount of time to do them. Um, so it still means things are going to be delayed, but you're still going to get them. But I know there's lots of people at the moment pointing fingers at like an airfix and saying, oh, you've dropped this and you're not releasing that. And that's six months late. I think it's a little bit unfair with the world as it is at the moment. Mm -hmm. It's just circumstances and companies are trying to do what they can, you know, to bring it out and get it there. It's not like they own their own machines to be able to do it. The company or I know directly who do it don't own the machines. They just rent the line. So they can only have it for X amount of time. So the, what they produce in it is very limited. So they have to yeah. make a decision on what line of products they're going to be doing. Yeah. Um, you know, so it's just human nature, but it will come round. People yeah, relax, we'll get, we'll just get, chill yeah. and relax. It will all be there one day. Yeah, exactly. Okay, Chris says, hi, Phil and Matt. Uh, I've just put in an order with PMM, uh, which includes some Mr. Metal Primer R. I was wondering if there are any specific uh, special tricks or tips either you might have for using it, such as brushing or spraying it, uh, or do anything else with it. No, you just literally brush paint it out the job. Yeah, it comes with its own brush, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. Or I would so probably bin that one off and use a an older, decent size, you know, like a number one, number two brush. Yeah. Um, and and literally all it is 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 an acid etch primer from what I can gather. Mm -hmm. So it'll obviously promote uh, adhesion, promote any. Well, it gets a better off. grip. Yeah, it does. And then when you yeah. primer at the top, it's not going to flake off. That's yes. basically what it's for. But yeah, I, I presume you can spray it. It depends how big an area, obviously, of uh, metal you've got to do. I think the uh, it, nice thin coat. You don't yeah, need, I was going to say, I think really you on. just brush it. I don't think you really need to airbrush it because you don't want to be spraying acid primer around your room. Not really. <laughs> it might be better to brush it on. Yeah. Uh, but yes, good stuff. Yeah. Uh, Steve says, hi guys, quick mention uh, of something strange. A recent PM order included the Tamiya Red Brown 2 Lacquer. Uh, which they say uh, the bottle, this stuff looks olive drab in colour. One YouTuber described it as baby poo green. There you go. They said the colour. There's the colour. And um, just a comparison, that's the new red brown two, which is in the XF range. There you go. Let your full screen. And that's the same colour. So there you go. Do it side by side. That's it. Cool. So there you go. So yes, I've had this before. I've had Kev. Our Kev has messaged me about it. I sent him them because he was asking about the lacquer range and wanting to try them. And yeah. We've got, hey, we've got time wrong. We've got 40 seconds. Sorry. Now. I know. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. Um, and he said the same thing. He says, oh, it's like, don't look, it looks more olive drab than brown. Mm -hmm. But he was going to test it and spray it and obviously if you carry on reading this question it's um the answer is it for us really because he sprayed it and it does come into a shade of brown so so it might not look it in the bottle but spray it apparently it's all right yeah uh, so that's the thing again that's the trouble when you go around googling and youtubing sometimes it's better just to give it a spray and see what you got yeah, <laughs> yeah i mean it's to be fair with tammy it's not often they get it wrong mm-hmm especially paints i know obviously they're a bit generic but they're not miles off what they should be yes so yeah and he then, says my package also included the new what best spin it's what you've got the mouse and the um, oh the little ones the little second tanks yeah we're hold on. On. hold on i should have enough cable to get around here uh, here they are i will get these reviewed hopefully this week yes so he's got the mouse the mouse here we go. Uh, looking forward to your thoughts on it. My eye, uh, to my eyes, it looks a great little kit, and you get a lot for your money. To be honest, I can't look. I can only look at the box because I'm not allowed to look before I review them. Yep. I haven't been inside a box yet. Nope. So, but I will do. I, to be honest, if I get a bit of time tomorrow afternoon, I will do them. 
Yeah. And um, we'll get them in. But it looks nice because you do get a metal barrel photo etch. I can see that on this, which I, I must admit, I haven't even looked at the boxes yet. Uh, replacement tracks. Very good as yeah. well. So, yeah, you get all the stuff with it. I yeah. must admit, I'll do the review on it, Steve, and we'll get back to you on that one. Yeah. And we've got a couple of questions just in here. Uh, hi, Phil and Matt. Uh, when do you expect a restock of the Mirage 3? Uh, well, we do need to do. I was actually waiting because, I, I, you know, obviously I thought the Harrier were going to be around, so I was going to yeah. do a, a kinetic restock. So um, I'm sure we could tag one onto an order, to be honest. I'm sure we can get them back in soon. So, yeah, I'll have a look who's, uh, who's got them in. Yeah, we can do that. And last up, we've got, uh, this is Andrew saying, Hi, Phil and team. I'm fairly new to using lacquer paints uh, and have a quick question. I'm currently building the Tamius Ducati 911 Pangalali. Panigale. Panigale. I knew it was one of them. <laughs> uh, I wanted to put a clear coat over the decals and have LP9 to hand. Uh, I know I'd like to know would it eat through the cartograph decals if spray brushed uh, over that part. Thank you all for your time. Love the live shows and the builds. Keep up the good work. Now, Andrew, I no, think you'd be it fine. It should be absolutely I'd fine. Absolutely fine. Yeah, it'll be fine. Yeah. The only thing, obviously, the biggest thing is um, you use the keyword there and you spray paint over the top. If you brush, obviously lacquers will eat and strip it instantly but if you just put it on it will just stick and layer onto it yeah. you know unless you really flooded it or had air pressure like a pressure washer and trying to rinse it off you could probably take it off then mm -hmm. but like i always say a lot of people say about oh surely that will eat through if you're airbrushing onto it it will just sticks to it yeah. but the thing is if you're using a brush it's that thing um you say never brush twice you can like brush like thinners over decals but if you go back the other way it will strip it clean off yeah. so you can make one pass with it but you don't want to go again so really it's no different from having if you're using acrylic paint like you know tamiya acrylics and then using like i do a lot uh x20a as in acrylic lacquer uh, acrylic thinners for decal sealing you can brush it right over but if you were niggling around with it you're going to melt the paint because it will soften and eaten into the acrylic paint below but if you're just brushing one and done you'd be absolutely fine with it but airbrushing is airbrushing very, very safe. Be fine yeah no problem be absolutely perfect because i mean you're doing microns aren't you of a coat anyway how thick it is yes so and it'll dry pretty much instantly with lacquer thinners anyway mm -hmm. not sit there so yeah you'll be yeah no problem at all be no problem there on there yeah right okie dokie are we done then yes that's it yeah, we're all done cool. see there you go still almost an hour right <laughs> <laughs> right uh so obviously the biggest thing is is this weekend there's going to be no live show tomorrow night i know a lot of you are watching there's no we usually do the live show on a thursday night at 7 30 but because of the telford weekend yep. we just pushed it over to the friday because obviously we're going to be with you on friday at 7 30 instead of the thursday 7 30. Hey, just while i think sorry to interrupt you they're actually getting a bonus because if we was doing Telford properly, there wouldn't have been a Thursday show anyway. No. Because no. we wouldn't have had time to do a Thursday show, would they? <laughs> yeah, that's it. So, yeah. yeah, we'd have been packing up all the wagons, I packing up the lorry in the van and Wait, everything. I've got something. Oh, what you f oh, yeah, your rockets. Hold on, let me go full screen with you. Right, just to show, um, yeah. we'll put these in stock. So these are Horizon models, obviously the... Get it right way round, Ed. I, can't, I can never work this on camera. That's it, yeah. that one's round that way. The other one's up the other way. So these are our early rockets, yes. basically, um, and different things. And I thought, and I'm going to be really, really honest, these were reboxes of older kits, and they're not. They're a small company out of um, Australia, and they do some really, really cool stuff. So Jeez, I think apologies to Horizon models. I will apologise now because I really did think I never really thought about it. Yeah. Um, but yeah. So if you're into space travel and mm -hmm. stuff, so you've got all your Mercury capsules. And yeah, you can see the dates on the bottom. Look, they're not even old. They're brand. You know, they're pretty brand. Yeah. You get a bit of photo etching them um, and really nicely molded. I'm going to send some to Phil to review. And you know, they do. I think they do yeah. about five different kits. So yeah, the redstone. Here you go. There you go. So if you are into your, you know, early space or just space in general, look at the Atlas. Uh, do, unfortunately, you don't get the tower. No, no, it's just the, the rocket. Atlas, so you do get the rocket, but yeah. I'll, That's it. Yeah, 
Lovely. But no, some Lovely. really interesting stuff in there. I'll be interested to get my hands on them. And as a bit of a sci-fi geek. And then that's the yes. last one. Look. So there you go. Cool. So I think one of these is the first manned rocket. Yes. I don't know. Um, so yeah, really interesting stuff. And like I say, they, they are actually very nice kits. So we'll be getting them in stock and putting them up. Cool. Very good indeed. Cool. Very nice. Okay. Right. <laughs> Okie dokie then guys, well thank you very much for joining us this afternoon, it's a pleasure as always, as I said we're going to be with you, next up will be on uh, uh, Friday 7.30 till God knows when for our sort of, you know, looking back at Telford and everything else and obviously we've been talking about SIGs and group builds so you can work out what kits you're going to need for next year. Yep. Uh, and stuff like that and then obviously we'll be with you throughout the weekend so if you want to obviously see what we're up to check out obviously on the social media we'll be on facebook we'll be obviously on youtube we'll be on the flooring model site we'll be up to where pm store obviously and things like that yeah. and then obviously any discount codes promotional stuff obviously you can keep up to date with exactly what's going on and hopefully be able to pick up some bargains yeah. as we make our way through so there we go don't forget you got those reviews you can see those i'll try and get these done for the end of the week as well if not they will probably be up monday tuesday next week as we make our way through anyway thank you very much for joining us a pleasure as always say goodbye mr matt goodbye see you on friday night say good night leslie she's gone oh she has gone right yeah, okay. she's gone, yeah. <laughs> bless we will see you all again very soon bye, bye.